Hey, what's going on, B-Staff Fishing Nation? Uh, it's me, Bob, for those of you just joining in. Uh, for those of you that uh, continually uh, watch and subscribe and like, thank you so much. It's so great to have you back. Long and short, I pulled the off course out yesterday on Thursday, uh, and it was honking. It was 20, 25 mile an hour northeast winds. Um, and, uh, I got there at the top of the tide to pull the, uh, to pull the boat out, but man, that, that those winds were just blowing me right off the dock. I, uh, had a hard time getting the boat up to the dock, to the ramp. Uh, thank goodness Captain Jerry was on board with me and, uh, we got it done after three attempts, maybe four, not sure. Uh, long and short, boats out of the water. This weekend's going to be pretty rough. Uh, they're talking gusts starting uh, tomorrow. Well, today's Friday, the 30th. Tomorrow is October 1st, Saturday. Tonight into tomorrow, and tomorrow we should see uh, the possibility of gusts up to 45 mile an hour out of the east-northeast. Where I'm at, east-northeast, that, that magnitude is no good. I wound up taking, uh, taking water over the, uh, over the stern or over the sides of the boat, uh, the possibilities there. So, I pull my boat in. I don't back my boat in just because a um, lot of lot of mud and and whatnot. So it is what it is. In fact, Big Ed, the landlord, he pulled his uh, his boat out as well yesterday. So I don't know that he's putting back in. I'm going to put back in. I think um, next Wednesday or Thursday. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to be fishing next Thursday. So stay tuned. But in the meantime, we got some downtime. So when you got downtime, what do you do? You tie rigs. So I'm going to teach you uh, guys how to tie a rig um, and a knot that I just learned. And it's basically the T-knot, okay? And you can use this for all sorts of fishing. You can use it for flounder fishing. You can use this for sea bass, for tog, um, for trigger fishing. You know, it's all a matter of how far up from the bottom loop you put your uh, you put your, your T-knot. How long of a uh, of a leader uh, you have coming off of that T knot? The size hook, what you're using for bait, where you're fishing, what you're targeting. So this here is going to be a tutorial for the T knot. All right, let's get get let's get at it. Get get got it. Let's get it. Okay, guys, here we go. All right, I'm going to try and hopefully uh, this works well. And you're able to see this. So long and short, uh, we're going to use a 60-pound test leader just to, uh, for demonstration purposes, hopefully so you guys can see this pretty good. So, and um, I may be going back and forth a little bit just looking to see. Oh, look at this. Dimpled Rex off OC and TI. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. A lot of Rex. A lot of Rex. The Fisherman Magazine did a... Uh, expose about four pages beginning of the year about dimpled wrecks out in front of ocean city and uh townsend's inlet so yep 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 uh it's actually really good for those of you that uh want to get out there and try your hand at tog fishing you know oh, what's going on with my little fishy here come here buddy come here pally what happened here let's get you swinging there we go there we go buddy let's go whoa whoa Oh, buddy, take it easy. All right, fish on. All right, guys, so long and short. Dimpled Rex. This is a great rig to fish Rex, okay? Um, recently, some of the guys have been using a rig similar to this to fish for flounder. This way, their bottom, you know, normally my bottom loop has what? Has a jig on it, right? Well, instead of having a jig... It's going to have a uh, a sinker or a dipsy. Okay, now I don't know that we're going to be able to get this through this dipsy because this I'm looking at this hole in this dipsy, but uh, the hole's pretty narrow here. But we'll give it a be our best shot. Okay, all right. Down the bottom for your dipsy. Okay, and you can use a ball jig on this too, guys. You know those of you that are you know like me, I'm tried and true jig jig fisherman. You could still put a ball jig on the bottom of this, right? Give yourself a twist. Okay, make your loop. You want your loop big enough for whatever. Um, jig, bucktail, or dipsy you're going to use on the bottom. So, you want to come through this two times. Once. Twice. Oops. Once. Twice. This is awful stiff. I'm trying to use this so you guys can see. Hope I don't work against myself here. Alright, moisten every knot. You want to moisten them. You little bit of spitteroonie. It's, you know, what we got on board. 
Tighten that down, okay? Tighten her down. Give her, give her a pull. Widen her out. Give her a clip, right? Clip her away. Oh, that went flying. Okay, so there's our, there's the very first part, our bottom dropper loop, you know, for bucktail, ball jig, most likely, you're going to put a, a dipsy on there, four, five, six, whatever you need. Now, we need to come up, okay, so you figure, I'm going to hang down here about that low, you're going to come up, give or, give or take, however, however high you think you should. Now, let's say, um, Let's say we're, we're, we're tog fishing, right? So we need to be closer to the bottom, okay? Mind you, I have about a three, uh, a 36, 36 inch leader. Hopefully I used enough. We're gonna come up a little bit here. We're gonna do the same thing, okay? So we are going to make a, a pretty large loop, right? Pretty large loop. And I'll show you why this loop's gonna be as big as it is. Four, five, six, eight inches long. Let's grab a ruler. What do you say? Should we grab a ruler? Oh, back when I was a dare officer. All right. That there is at least eight inches. Okay. So say we'll do eight inches. Make a make a loop. Okay. So you have your loop. Make another loop. Right. You're going to come through this loop five, six times, depending upon the thickness of your leader. So one, two. Three. I'm going to go four because this is pretty thick. Okay. Four. I'm using a 60 pound leader here so you can see this. So four. All right. Now we're going to pull this tight, guys. Again, you got to moisten. So a little B stab spit and let's pull this tight. Okay. Here we go. Pull her tight. All right. Cinch her down. Cinch her one way. Boom. Cinch her the other way. Okay. That's part of the T, believe it or not, right there. Now, we have this loop, okay? And this is going to actually become a leader. You could leave it as a loop, put a hook on it, or I'll show you what we're going to do later. So we got our bottom loop for our sinker. And we have that loop that we just made. Now we have to finish the T, okay? What you're going to do now, you are essentially going to do a loop knot, or a dropper loop, excuse me, a dropper loop. So, see what I did here? Just awesome. come across. Okay. And we're going to twist. We're going to come over. Hand one over top of another. We're going to do this about, uh, say, five times, right? So there's three, four, five. Okay. Five times. We have this loop here. All right. We are going right, to bring. Step fishing Nation. My apologies. Initial this 60 pound leader did. is tough to work through. with. But you're going to bring the loop that you initially made and you're going to bring now, it through now uh well, this loop here. Hold on. of the dropper here, loop we? okay where we just went one over top of another and you make sure you bring right. the really knot the all the way so. through and right, have the knot right, right up against the uh, leader material guys keep through. watching okay. i'm going to do this knot again with a piece of yellow rope much easier to see but what i need you to do is that knot's got to come through as well okay so we got to pull the knot through. Boom. Got the knot through, but leave the knot right up against that line. Okay? Leave the knot right up against that line. Now, now you can see. All right, I'm sorry, guys. There we go. The knot came through the loop that I just fed that loop through. And then, again, wet it and start pulling it tight. Okay? Cinch it down little by little, little by little, keeping the base of this knot up against the main line okay and with this thicker stuff it's going to twist all right see how she's tightening she's tightening give her another cinch cinch her down squeeze them with your fingers a little bit right that's how we always cinch those knots in guess what guys we got us a t-knot okay so now we have our t-knot bottom loop Dipsy ball, ball jig sinker, whatever you want to put down there, bucktail, 
dropper loop up here, but it's in a T-knot, and it's it's that T-knot's not going anywhere. Okay, cinch as best you can. Okay, that's that's cinched. Now, and this is probably more for some of you flounder fishermen too. I might start doing this next year. I'm uh, I'm thinking about it. I really am thinking about it. Um, so you have a little line that floats out, you know, above my uh, above my bucktail down here. Have a line that floats out a little farther instead of you know a dropper loop 12 18 inches up off the bottom and you know tight to the, the the main leader so what you can do is you come to the base of this knot okay the base of this loop rather snip it all right snip it i'm sorry guys my instagram's going uh or my snapchat's going bananas snip it this knot, this isn't going to back out. You think, oh man, we just compromised this. We're good. Nothing is getting through this T-knot, okay? This is not unraveling. It's not going to unravel. Now, you could have made this, remember when we did that loop and it was about eight inches? So let's see what, after all that tying and twisting and whatnot, what we actually ended up with, right? We started out at eight inches. Guarantee we're probably at about five, six maybe. Just just making six inches. So we lost about two inches of line doing all that all that tying. But now what do we have? Come to the base of that again. We have over 12 inches of line here. Okay. From here, whatever way you like to tie on a, a bait holder hook, so be it. If you want to do another little loop here and tie on, I don't know, a spoon, a little, a very light flutter spoon. Uh, if you're going to be flounder fishing, but if you're tog fishing, okay, so we want, when this leader's down here, the sinker's on the bottom, we need our bait to be on the bottom, tog or bottom feeders, right? Now, if you're targeting sea bass, okay, we're down here, sea bass, we all know, they'll both feed off the bottom, but they're up a little higher in the, in the water column there, uh, depending upon the structure. We could have started this knot up here, okay? We, so we'd have been up here instead of where we are. But now if we're tog fishing, or if we're jigging for, even if jigging for flounder here, guys, think about it. We're jigging for flounder, and this thing's holding out back here. Awesome. You're just going to snell a hook, however you normally snell a hook, okay? Um, it's been a while since I've snelled a hook. Let's go this way. Should we go this way, shall we? This is not one of my fortes here, ladies and gentlemen, snelling a hook. But make that little loop down the bottom, give her a twist, come around, shaft five, six times. Okay, for the sake of trying to get this done because I have, I'm dealing with 60 pound test here. This leader material is ridiculously strong. I'm gonna come through. Yeah, I'm having a hard time just because it's so, it's so strong. Come back through that hole. Come on, you can do it. Nice. Cinch her down. Give her a little wetter. A little water, a little spit. A little go-go juice. Right? Do not get yourself hooked. Cinch it up. Cinch it up. Give that a pull. If you have pliers, grab it, pull it. Okay, listen, guys. Be careful. Let's not get ourselves jacked up. That's tight as right, baby. Snip it off. Ho! Oh, I'm just gonna, I think I took an eye out. Yo, look at old B-Stav back in the day. That's B-Stav. Back when I was in my 20s. Brand new cop. In fact, that was 1996. That's my old sergeant. My very first sergeant, Ralph. And that there, you guys, I don't know if you recognize him, but he was my lieutenant at the time. Retired as a captain. That's uh, Bucktail Johnny that comes out with me. That's JP's dad. So, all right, but guys, look, see what we got. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this loop through this uh, dipsy. Let's see. If I could do it, great. For demonstration purposes, I don't know that the, the hole in this dipsy is wide enough. Of course, I had to pick one that might not have worked, right? Way to prepare, be stab, you big dummy. Come on, through. You can do it. Yes, success. 
think I broke out my sweat on that one. All right, sinker. If you want to do a barrel swivel, do a barrel swivel. If you want to do uni to uni, whatever knot that you feel most comfortable with, tying your leader to your main line, whichever means, do it. So here we are. Let's think about it. Right, again, this, this hook, I would, would never use this for toggle, although a smaller version, quite possibly. But here you go, guys. Let's look at it. Sinker on the bottom. Right, your sinker's laying down there on the bottom. If you're tog fishing, your crab, your greenie, your white legger, right, it's laying there. Bang, you're good to go. If you are sheep's head fishing, okay, you might want to bring this up a little bit. So we could have done this up here. Okay, so now instead of being down here laying on the bottom, we're kind of floating up in the water column a little bit. We're suspended. Same thing if you want to go for sea bass. Same thing if you want to go for trigger fish. Those of you that are flounder fishing, okay, we can use this for flounder. Here we are. We're bopping along. We're bopping along. I would have probably, I don't know that I'd have this up any higher. Have my four ounce, three, four ounce, five ounce dipsy down there, whatever you need to, uh, to hold bottom, right, to get on, get down on the bottom and not scope out. And here you have your bait holder hook out here floating, right? Your bait holder hook with your gulp. Good to go. All right, let's try it one more time with, with some yellow line. Maybe this will help a little bit. I know it's going to be easier for me to tie. All right, take your, your leader. Make a loop. There's your loop. Okay. Come through once. Come through twice. You're going to wet that. You're going to cinch it. All right? Wet it. Cinch it. By wetting that line, guys, it, it you all know, it, it just makes it cinch down uh, a lot better and helps protect the, the integrity of the knot. We're going to cut this off. I doubt this is going to go flying now. Cut that off. There we go. Put that aside. Let's go, buddy. Catch that fish. All right. We're going to come up. Say we wanted to come up a little higher this time, right? So now, instead of being... As close to the bottom as we were. We're not tog fishing. Now say we're, uh, we're going to go up in the water column a little higher for sea bass. Okay? Coming up a little higher for sea bass. Here's our loop. Make that loop again. So we made our pinch it off, make a loop, twist it over itself. Going to come through here five, six times. Okay? Again, I'll probably do four to five times just because... I'm dealing with, you know, thicker line here. That's two. Three. Let's do four for, for GP. Wet that. Cinch it. We got part of our T already done. Cinch it down tight. Obviously, if you're using 20-pound test leader, okay, you're going to get a really nice tight knot, okay? There we go. Now, what do we need to do? We need to do, essentially, a dropper loop. Have it here. Have your two lines, right? Your two ends. Cross them over. Okay. Cross them over. So where their lines are laying across, neck, across each other, we're just going to start twisting. Come over. Bring, you know, come over. Three, four, five, six times. I like five. I always like an, un, uh, uh, an uneven number, right? Come over. Bring this loop through bring the knot through as well okay bring your knot through as well here comes the knot stop right at the lines see what we did there this actually is working out much better okay see our knot is right up against the line okay and we're going to wet that we're going to cinch it down she might spin a little cinch it down keeping the original knot tight to the line, the leader. Here we go. Tighten her up. Bang. Tight. Perfect. Nice T. If you want to just put a hook here, knock your socks off. If, again, you want to cut this, give us a snipperoony. Tight to the knot, okay? Cut it tight to the knot. Again, this won't back out, guys and girls. This will stay. That's it. You're good. You're tight. Nothing's happening here. You want to keep cinching this? 
nice and tight, okay? I got to get back to the gym here. Dropper loop down the bottom for your dipsy, bucktail, ball jig, whatever, what have you. But if, say, we're going for sea bass, dipsy down the bottom. Now we have a little leader that's suspended. It's not going to hang on the bottom. It's not going to lay on the bottom. And when you snell your hook, you're going to have it somewhere around here. And that's exactly where you're going to be at, suspended. Triggerfish, sea bass, sheep's head, right? Whatever else is out there, honestly. This, I mean, this is a go-to rig for anything. You know, if there's kingfish out there, you're good. If there's uh, weak fish out there, you're good. I mean, you're you're good. You're good here. It all, it all depends what you're targeting. But this is a basic go-to rig for anything you want to fish for. You could even here flounder, right? This is where I try my dropper loop up here. So if I have a sinker down there, now I have make this maybe a little little longer, so it's trailing out there a little more. Bait holder hook, 3040 Gamagatsu bait holder hook with a gulp grub on there or a gulp uh, swimming mullet. Golden. Golden. Okay. So far, so good. I think we did it. I think we did it. All right. All right. B Stab Fishing Nation. Not too hard, right? That's something you could tie fairly quickly. Again, I use that 60 pound leader material, especially, of course, it was fluorocarbon, right? It couldn't have just been like a 60 pound line. 60 pound leader material. So you can uh, see it better. But man, it's hard to tie. It really is. Uh, luckily, that um, yellow twine that worked out pretty good. You were able to see it a little better. Um, but again, that is probably one of your most versatile go-to knots, leader rigs that you can tie for almost any type of fishing you're going to do when you're on the bottom. Flounder, right? Definitely could use that for flounder. Um, sea bass. Tog. Porgy. If you're lucky enough down in South Jersey to find one. Triggerfish. Sheep's head, you name it. If there's weak fish down there, if there's kingfish out there. Guys and girls, if, even in the back, okay, say if that's the, that's just, that's where you can go. Right now, you know, I, I'm limited. I have a 23 foot. You think, oh, 23 foot, you can handle it. Carolina skiff. Nope, I can't go out when it's, when it's uh, you know, fairly rough out. It's just, it's just not worth it. I get beat up and I'm not taking any risks, okay? I'm pounding my boat. So if you got kids and you're in the back, the little sea bass are biting. Okay, the little whatevers are biting. You know, you modify. You want to put a smaller hook on. Um, or if you're going to go fish bridges for tog, for sheep's head, for whatever's whatever's biting. Trigger fish at the rocks. Tog at the rocks. Um, you're gold. Okay, so I hope that helps. Guys, I want to thank uh, Minn Kota for sending me, um, sending me this hat. Just got it in the mail. Don't know why. I guess they were sending them out to all of their, uh, their owners. Sincerely thank Minkota again for the hat. If you like this video, I know I'm not fishing, guys. I wish I was out there. But if you like this video, please hit the like button. Click the subscribe button. Click that bell so you're not missing any notifications. You know when I put up another video, whether it be a short or a regular, uh, regular video. Hopefully, the off course will be back in the water and we will be making a fishing video next Thursday. So we got to weather this storm. Speaking of storms, please take a moment. Forget about liking. Forget about subscribing. Say your prayers to the man upstairs for the folks, our brothers and sisters down there in southwest Florida, Fort Myers, Naples, Cape Coral, and the like that are just dealing with sheer and utter devastation. I mean, homes wiped out, lost, boats wiped out, destroyed, lost. More importantly, we have our brothers and sisters down there lost their lives. Say your prayers, okay? Appreciate it. God bless you. God bless our brothers and sisters down in Southwest Florida. And uh, I'll see you next time on Be Stab Fishing. Hopefully, we'll be on the water. Take care, guys. Thank <laughs> you.